pass your awareness down the body, starting at the head, and let me know if you find anything. Lower stomach. Mm -hmm. Right calf area. Mm -hmm. A little something in the throat. Very good. That's it. Very good. Very good. Let's take a look at that lower stomach first. So I want you to bring all of your awareness down to that lower stomach. Just really focusing in on that sensation that you feel there in the stomach. And as you expand and connect even more deeply to that feeling there in the stomach, if you could give that energy a color, what color would it be? Oh, it's dark, like really dark, like jet black. Very it's good. Really, it's really tight. Mm-hmm. Very good. So that tight jet black energy if that dark, tight, jet black energy there in the stomach could speak with us, if it could speak with us, what would that energy want to say? It's saying, no, I don't want to speak. No, I don't want to speak. Very good. I'm pretty angry. Mm-hmm. Tell me about that. What is it that makes you feel so angry? Everything. Life. Mm -hmm. It's frustrating. Everything's frustrating. Yes. I don't like I don't like the people. I don't like how they are. I don't like I just don't like anything. Yes. I understand. And so can you think back to a time when you had a body? I don't really feel a physical body. It's just a mass. You feel like a mass. And so let's begin to shine some light in there. We're just going to illuminate things there for you for just a moment so that you can remember if you've ever had a physical body. So I have my team here with me today, and I'm going to bring forward the archangels. We have Archangel Michael, we have Raphael, and we have Gabriel. And we have other archangels and guides assisting us. So we're going to begin to channel in some light there into the stomach. Just channeling in some light so it will begin to illuminate, illuminate that area. And you can begin to remember who you are. Tell me a little bit more about yourself. Do you feel male or female? I feel male. I feel big. I feel strong. I feel really big. Yes. Male and big and strong. Very good. And does an age come to mind? Forties. Mm-hmm. Very good. And so as you allow yourself to drift and float through time and space, just drifting and floating back in time, can you remember that last time that you had a body. Can you remember how you lost that body? I remember being pushed, being pushed off something. Mm -hmm. Who Tall, pushed like you? A, I think it's like a bridge or. Like a bridge. <sighs> There's a group of, group of people in there like I think there's three or four people and they're you were just yelling we're all yelling they're yelling at me and then they pushed me off mm -hmm. can you recall if there was anything that you did to make them want to do that they just didn't like me mm. they didn't like who I was they didn't like my kind we don't like you and we're gonna push you off Tell me a little bit about your kind. What makes you different from those who pushed you? My skin color. Mm. 
And so as you think back to that time on the bridge where you were pushed, can you recall what year it is for you? 32, 1932. 1932, very good. And so as you were pushed over that bridge, just allow yourself to observe what happened to you next. I just remember falling. I remember being pushed off and just falling. And then I'm walking, I'm walking around. But things seem different. There's no color left in things. It's just dark and I'm just walking around. Mm. And I'm angry. And you're angry, angry for being pushed off of that bridge, right? Yeah, I don't. I, I didn't deserve that. I didn't do anything wrong. I don't understand why. I don't understand why they did this to me. And now I'm lost and I'm just walking and I don't, I don't recognize any place. I don't recognize anything. Mm. You didn't deserve what happened to you. Let's no. see if we can begin to understand a little bit more. So in this place, of space and time, you can begin to connect in with the energy of this group that pushed you over the bridge. And as you connect with them telepathically and mind to mind, you will begin to understand what they were thinking as they made that choice to push you that day. Tell me what comes through. Well, some of them were just doing what the others were doing. They didn't really feel anything bad towards me they just are doing what the others are doing and there's like two of them that were like leading the thing and they just they just were angry people mm -hmm. they were angry in their lives and i was just somebody that they could you know we don't like him we're angry we don't like him so let's do something they thought it was funny to poke at me and to push me and they're all laughing. How did they feel after it happened? Well, those that, the ones that weren't really into it felt, oh, wow, we shouldn't have done that. The other ones were like, ha, ha, ha. Ha ha, look at him. We did it. They just were laughing. Mm -hmm. They thought it was funny and it was good. One less, one less of them around, they said. One less of them around. Ha ha ha. Well, I'm so sorry that you had to experience that. How is it that you found Santa? Well, we saw her light. Mm-hmm. And she seemed alone. I was alone. So I stayed with her. Mm -hmm. How long have you been with her? Can you remember when you, what age she was when you found her? Mm, she was little, like seven. And what was she going through at that time? She was scared. Yes. She was scared. So I thought, you're scared? I'm not scared. I'll be with you. I'm alone. I can be with you. You have a light. I can see through you. This feels better than just wandering around and walking and being alone and not knowing where to go. Yes. So as you've been with Santa for quite a while now, what sort of issues have you been causing for her? Well, we're angry. So when people are mean to her, we show them how big we are. We, 
It's like I want to protect her, so I'm there to protect her, but it doesn't cause protection. It causes more fear. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel when you cause her to have that fear? Well, it doesn't really matter what she feels. It just matters that I feel okay and I feel... I just want to feel okay again. I don't want to just be wandering around. And when I'm with her, I feel like I have a purpose and a place. And so I'm just going to stay here until I just, I don't have a purpose and I don't have a place, but here there's a purpose and here there's a place. So I'm just going to stay here. So how would you, how would you feel if I told you that you can have your own purpose and your own place in the world again, you don't have to be there attached to someone else to feel that. What would you think about that? Well, that sounds good, but I don't know because this has been really working for me. This works here. We like this here. We like this here. Yeah, it's comfortable, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'm going to ask my beautiful team of angels to step forward. Archangel Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, tell me when you see them. Uh, they're all around. We see them. Yeah. Tell me what they say to you. They say, come with us. Come with us. It's okay. I don't know. I don't know. So let's do this. I want you to begin to feel the light within you because I bet it's something that you haven't felt for a very long time. Inside of your physical being, there is a spark of light. It is a divine spark of light. Tell me when you see that light. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, there, there, there it is. Wonderful. So we're going to ask the angels and the guides to begin to channel in light to that spark. And I want you to begin to expand that spark of light because I want you to feel that energy that you haven't felt for so long. Expand that light around you. Tell me how that feels. It's like it lightens things. It's not as dark as it was. It's like, it's like an opening. Yes, make it bigger and to brighter and to feel that energy, feel that love that's coming in from the angels and the guides. You haven't felt that for a while, have you? You've been so angry. No, and I don't think I've ever felt this before. Mm, tell me how it feels for you. <sighs> I can feel it like through my whole being and it's like... It just feels so open and like fresh, like somebody opened the door and fresh air's coming through. Mm -hmm. Breathe that in. <sighs> Breathe that in and allow that energy to continue to expand. Oh, wow. I like this. I like it. Yeah. So I want you to look around and I want you to see if you see a beautiful light, the white light of source. Yeah, it's like coming, it's, I can see it on the right side, on the top right side, and it's like bright. Mm -hmm. And as you look into that light, I want you to notice if there's anyone there waiting for you. Yeah, I saw a hand reach out, and there's a bunch of, there's, I, I know them, I know them. Who is yeah. that? Connect with them and tell me who that is. Well, there's my mother, and there's my sister, and my brother, and I think that's a dog that we had, and my grandpa, he has our grandpa, and my grandma, and my uncle, they're all there, they're saying, we've been waiting, we've been waiting mm -hmm. for you. So now that you see your beautiful family is <sighs> waiting to take you home, are you ready to go with yeah. them today? Wonderful. Yeah, I want to be with them. Wonderful. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to begin to pull all of your energy out from Santa's stomach, pulling and disconnecting all of your energy out. The angels are going to assist. If you need to take their hands, you can do so. Santa, I want you to feel all of that energy being pulled out and released from the stomach. Every single bit of that energy disconnecting, feel it leaving the body. I want you to tell me when you feel like this energy is completely released. Completely released. 
pulling every last bit of energy out. Take all of your energy back with you. Okay. You feel this release. Very good. Mm -hmm. So before you go back to the light with your family, is there anything that you want to say to Santa? Oh, Santa, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for weighing you down like I did. Thank you for letting me take that place. And thank you, and I'm sorry. Very good. Santa, can you forgive this soul? Yes. For being there with you. You kept him yes. safe and protected for so long. Yes. I'm so happy you found your family again. Beautiful. So we're going to have the angels assist you onto the next part of your journey. And we send you with so much light and so much love. And Santa, I want to begin to bring in some beautiful healing energy into the stomach to fill up that space. What color would you like to use? Pink. Very good. So feeling that pink energy and the angels and guides will also channel that energy in. We're going to begin to fill up and expand around and through the stomach where that energy was connected there. We're going to ask Michael to cut any cords or connections, and we're going to allow this energy to release any energetic residue left by this attachment and to feel that expand Tell me what you feel as that energy comes in. Hmm. I just feel like light mm -hmm. and like that. There's a little bit of like fluttering in the right area of the stomach, but it's like cleaning out. Okay, and let's double check on that fluttering. Is that just the energy flowing in or is that anything else we need to take a look at in that area? No, it's like a new, it's like an openness and the new energy is touching that openness. So it's causing that fluttering, but it's all good. Wonderful, wonderful. So that energy will continue to channel into that <sighs> space. And let's continue and bring your attention down to the right calf, just focusing in on that area. Tell me what sensations or what you feel. It's a very heavy, it's like constricting and it's like pulling, like cramping and pulling. Okay. Very good. And that constricting energy, if that constricting energy there in the right calf could speak with us, what does that energy want us to know? What does it want to say to us today? I've got this one. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about that. How do you have her? We've got her by our grasp. And you say we, are there more of you in there than just one? There's me, mm -hmm. but I work as a group. Tell me about that. Tell me about your group. <laughs> Who are you? You would like to know, but I won't tell you. Mm -hmm. Why not? I don't want to talk to you. You want Miss to go away, and I don't want to talk to you. Well, it's not that I want you to go away. I want to help you today. It can't be comfortable being I don't all need restricted. help. Tell me about that. Why don't you? I need don't help? need help. I don't need help. I am here, and I don't need help. How is it that you got there? Well, we were watching her. And we realized what she had and who she was, and we didn't want that. So we're going to keep our grasp on this one. Tell me more about that. Who is she? <laughs> what were you noticing about her? She's come here to bring about the change. Mm. What change we're is that? We're not, letting, we're not letting that change. We're not, we're not going to let that change. What's it's a change, change from dark about? from dark to light. Mm. 
see. We're staying dark. It's going to stay dark. The plans are for it to stay dark. Mm -hmm. Whose plans are those? For it to stay dark? Well, we've been here for a while. Mm -hmm. We've been residing here for a while on this planet. This planet is not the humans. This planet is ours and we are we are going to stay here. Mm -hmm. And so what happens if more of the light comes in? What happens to you? We don't want to look at that. We don't want to look at that. Mm -hmm. You see, if we look at that, it brings more of that and we don't want to look at that. So we are here to say to her and to those that the darkness is going to stay. We will make sure. Mm. Can you tell me where you come from? I come from where it's dark. Mm. We don't let light in. We hold on to the darkness. We feed the darkness. The darkness is something that we take with us. We carry with us. And places that need more darkness, we put in more darkness. You see, darkness has to be more than the light. So that way we can keep a hold of the energy balance, mm. which needs to be more dark. We are the ones that solidify the darkness. Can you tell me what you look like? Can you describe yourself for me and your group? Well, we can change our shape, you see. Mm -hmm. We can change, but as you said that and I looked, I am dark and I look close to, I have arms, I have legs, I have a tail, I have a face. But it's not human like this body. It is <sighs> we have not words for what you would say, but we will call it lizard like. Mm-hmm. And so you said there's a group of you. Can you tell me how many of you are in there? There is just me in here, okay. but I am a collective of the darkness. So where I reside, we all reside. Mm. It's not as if you, it's not like you would see something as in one space. It's something there. And within that there, there is many, there is multiple energies that create the one. I see. I see. How long is it that you've been with Santa? What age did you find her? We came in when this one was a baby. Ah. Oh. Because you see, we knew and we did not want any light to come in at any point with this one because this one has a purpose that we do not want. What is her purpose? Do you know? We don't like to talk about this. The purpose is light. This one can bring in large amounts of light. This one can change areas that we want to keep dark. This one can walk into places and change the dark to light. We do not want this. We do not want this. 
I understand. And so as you've been there with her since she was a baby, what kind of issues have you been causing throughout her life? We keep her in fear. <laughs> the more fear she has, the less light comes through. Yes. No light for this one, no light. We want no light. So I'm going to ask my friend, Michael, to go ahead and place his net of lights completely around Santa, just keeping you nice and safe in there for a moment. So just feeling that net of light, just gently enclosing this energy. And so I wonder, was it you that made the decision to be a part of Santa or do you have a, a master or a controller? It's like we can see the light, mm -hmm. even if it is a projection of the light that will be, we see that. And when we see that, we say, go there. And it's almost like we see it and then it pulls us. So we know we need to go to that area and take care of it and smother it, mm -hmm. smother the light. You see, we, we, we take that light, we cover it, we mask it, we hide it. And then the one they can't see, they say, I have no light, where's my light? The light's there, the light never goes, but you see, when we cover the light, they think it's not there. So our purpose is to cover the light. And then, since we work as a group, the group helps. The group says, let her see this, this will scare her. Let's show her this, this will scare her. And then I stay in the body and I help keep that light smothered. So she sees the things, it scares her. When fear comes in, it's natural for the light to step up. But see, we smother that light. Light can't step up. So you are very powerful, aren't you? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Very powerful. And so I wanted to tell you a little something. Did you know that you originally came from the light? Did you know that or have you forgotten that? I have no light. I am darkness. I am, uh, I am mm, dark. You do have light, though. You have it within you. I bet you've forgotten. Can I show you today that you have that light within you? I want you to look deep in the center of your being. Just look. It might be a tiny, tiny, tiny little spark, but it's in there. I see, Let me see it. Yes, there's something. Yes, yes. It's there, isn't it? So all along you thought you were the darkness, but really you were the light. Huh. So I'm going to ask the guides and the angels that are with us to just channel a little bit of energy into that spark, just making it a little bit bigger so that you can begin to feel a different source of energy, one that resides within you. And as you feel that energy become brighter and bigger and stronger and more powerful, tell me how that energy feels to you. What do you notice? Well, I'm a bit uncertain about it. Feels a little different, doesn't it? It does. I've never seen this before. Mm -hmm. Did you know that that was the divine no. spark of source? No. Yes. 
that was in you all along. You've just forgotten that it was there. Keep making that energy bigger, asking the angels to channel some more light into that spark, allowing you to feel a different kind of power that you had within you all along. Feel that energy begin to radiate through your entire being and tell me how that feels. What do you notice? I notice it's more of me now than not. Mm -hmm. Have you changed shape a little bit? Yes. Yes. There's also, it's like, yeah, I, my tail's gone. My tail's gone. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm the same from my shoulders up, but down there, down the bottom, it's gotten wider mm -hmm. and lighter. Yes. Keep and we're this. curious about this. It's curious to us. It's different, isn't it? It's interesting. It's very interesting because there's power in this. Yes. Yes, but this is it's what you've different. Forgotten. It's a different. It's almost like the power before was strong, but it was congested. And this power is like big, but it's wide. Mm -hmm. Expansive. Yes. And this is a power that you don't have to work so hard to enjoy, isn't it? It's just natural. Well, and it's like. We don't have to do all the work. No, you don't. You can just enjoy this light and this energy. Yeah. I don't know, though. I, I don't know. So are we able to connect with the group that you're connected with and help them to find their light as well? Are they here with us today? Well, there's some that pulled back. When I started lighting up, some pulled back, but there's four other ones that are still here that are curious as well. Very good. So let's allow them to feel that energy and they can make the decision of what feels best for them. So any of the beings that are here with us today that can find that spark of light, just find it there. And we're going to ask the beautiful angels and the guides to begin to channel energy to help that light begin to expand within illuminating who you are and what you are and making you even stronger and more powerful, even brighter. Feel that energy and that light begin to flow in. Tell me what you notice. Tell me how your friends are feeling. Two left. Two are still here. And how do they feel with that new power running through them? They're liking it. Yes, very good. And so you have the ability today to go back into the light and have a completely new existence where you don't have to try and keep anyone in the dark, but you can feel all the power that you want and just live your life how you choose. How does that well, sound? Well, we still have a purpose in there because we like having a purpose and the dark was giving us a purpose. Will we have a purpose in the light area? Absolutely. Let's ask Michael to step forward and Michael can share with you what your new purpose will be. What does he tell you? Hmm. It appears that at first there's going to be a resting because for purpose, it's good to rest first. I guess a resting is needed just because we've taken a lot with our last. And so now we're going to rest. And then when we rest, then we have a bigger purpose. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. We're going to have a bigger purpose. Yes. Yes, we agree to a bigger purpose. 
Oh, excellent. Excellent. So here's what we're going to do. <clears throat> we're going to assist you in releasing from Santa today. Now, <sighs> Michael has his net around you, and we're going to ask Michael to also just gently place his net around any other beings that are ready to go home to the light. Mm. That net is safe. And that net is powerful. And we're going to begin to pull all of your energy out of Santa's right calf. Michael is going to assist in three, feeling the net gently enclosing around your being. And two, feeling that energy pull up and out, feeling it pull up and out of the body. And one, Michael has released all of that energy and has you enclosed safely and is going to assist you back to the light, back to that resting place so you can have an even bigger purpose. And before you go, is there anything that you would like to say to Santa? No. Very good. Santa, anything that you would like to say to these beings? Just to go to the light and to accept your new purpose. Very good, very good. Michael and the angels are going to assist these energies back to the next part of their journey. And we send you off with light and love. Let's move back to the throat. So moving back to the throat, feeling the energy there in the throat, connecting deeply with that energy. And if you could give that energy there in the throat a color, what color would it be? Just like a gray, like a cloudy, like a, like a smoky, cloudy gray, mm -hmm. blue, like a, like a blue, blue, black, gray. Very good. And that energy there in the throat, if it could speak with us today, what would it want to say? We don't want her to talk. Very good. Why is it that you don't want her to talk? When she talks, she brings in light. She talks about things of light. Mm -hmm. mm. We don't want others to hear things of light. Yes. And so tell me, are, are you a similar energy to the ones down in the calves or are you different? Mm -hmm. We're similar, but not as dark. Mm -hmm. How is it that you became attached to Santa? When she started to speak more about light, we noticed it was planting these seeds. And we don't want those seeds to be planted in others. So we we came from another that she was helping. Mm. And a part of us, she cleared from the other. And a part of us found an open spot within her throat. You see, this one doesn't have a strong voice energy mm. so we saw an opportunity with the lack of strength to go into that area and to block the seeds from being planted ah oh, how long have you been there with her when did you find her mm -hmm. we're about eight years now and so this, this one that she was helping, was this one of her clients that she was working with? No, she was speaking to another that was having difficulties. And part of us jumped in. So what else have you been doing while you've been there attached to her throat? What have you been causing her? We give her the feelings of not wanting to talk, mm -hmm. not wanting to share. And then when she does share, 
We remind her and show her the bad things that happen, the people that judge, the people that think bad thoughts about her for sharing. We focus, we help her focus on that. Mm. So then she doesn't want to share. I see. We don't want her to share. We don't want her to share. And so are you also a collective of beings or are there more than one of you in there in her throat? There's two of us. Two of you. Can you tell me what you look like? We don't have form. Ah. How would you describe yourself? I would just say that I am shapeless. That I would look like, if we were to put a word to it, it would look like what you would call smoke or a cloud that constantly shifts and moves. We can get larger, we can get smaller, but we stay steady. Mm. We know how to stay steady at keeping the energy from being released with the words. Ah, I see. And so is that hard work for you? Do you have to work a lot to keep her from? It's constant work. Constant yes, it's work. constant work. How does that you make see? You because feel? this one, this one knows how to say words that aren't necessary. The words you would think that would cause light. Sometimes this one says, sometimes this one just asks questions to those. Mm. And just the questions will bring about. So we have to be very diligent on what she's going to say. So it's constant. It's like a fine tooth comb. It's like with a mic, it's like with a magnifying glass, looking at the words before the words are coming out as the words are being formed. We look at the words and see if that could bring about light. I see. So you must be very good at what you do then. Yes. Yes. So were you listening in on the other beings that we were just working with? Did you happen to see the transformation that they were able to go through? We listen and we see, but we don't put our attention. We just put our attention on the words that are being spoken by this one. Ah, I understand. So just like those beings that were down in the calf, you also have a different power within you, one that you've probably been unaware of for quite some time. Can I show you that power? Okay. So I want you to look in the center of what you are, just the center of your being. And there's a tiny, tiny spark of light. Tell me if you see that light. I don't know if it's light, but I see something there when you were saying it. It's like something a little, very small, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, like a seed of something. Mm -hmm. So here's what we're going to do, because I want you to feel that power as well. It's pretty incredible. Okay. So we're going to ask the angels to begin to channel in some bright white light. And as that energy is received, we're going to channel it in for both beings there in the throat, allowing them to receive that power and that energy expanding it out. It's going to begin to illuminate <coughs> that space. Yes, cough it out. <coughs> cough it out. It's okay. It's going to feel a little bit different. <coughs> Allow that energy to illuminate what you are and feel that power within. Mm. Mm. Tell me what that power feels like. Oh, we like this. You like it. Tell me about that. Yeah. Well. There's this brightness to it, but it's not just bright. There's a feeling to it that we've never, this, like, it like, it like feeds us and makes us powerful, yes. but, but it feels it. We've never felt this before. Make it bigger. 
make it even brighter. You can keep expanding that energy out. How big can we make this? As we like big, this. as big as you want to make it. There are no limits. Oh, oh. And the, the amazing thing about this energy is you don't have to do a single thing to receive it. You just have to feel it. You don't have to work. We don't have to do anything. For you this. don't have to do anything. How does that feel? Oh, we like this. Mm -hmm. Make that energy even bigger. <sighs> so as we worked with the beings that were there in the calf, mm -hmm. Archangel Michael let them know that they could have a greater purpose in life other than what they were doing. How does that sound for you as well? That sounds wonderful. Mm -hmm. So are you ready to release from Santa today and go back into the light? Experience a new type of life. Yes, because this feels a lot. This is more than we were. This, this, feel, we like this. This is feeling a lot better than what we were doing before. Much easier, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And this energy is going to feed you continuously. You don't have to do a thing. Just receive. We like that. Very good. So I'm going to ask Michael to place his net of light, beautiful, sparkly, safe net of light around the throat area, enclosing these beings. And in just a moment, we're going to have Michael pull you out of the throat. So three, feeling the net and closing around the throat area. Two, feeling Michael pull those energies up and out, up and out of the throat, all of that energy, releasing and disconnecting. And one, fully out now, feeling that energy fully out now. And tell me, Santa, how does that feel? It feels good. Does it feel like they've disconnected? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Before you go with Michael and he assists you back home, is there anything that you'd like to say to Santa? Yes. We're so sorry for dimming that light around your throat because we're realizing this light thing is good. <laughs> so we're sorry for that, Santa. Sorry. Santa, can you forgive them for not yes. knowing what they did? Yes, and may that light be with you forever. Beautiful. So Archangel Michael is going to assist these energies back where they need to go. And Santa, let's begin to fill up that throat with a beautiful energy. What color are we going to use? Mm, like an aqua blue. Mm -hmm. So beginning to channel in that aqua blue energy, feeling mm. that energy flow into the throat. And as it does, it's going to begin to expand that throat chakra, beginning to spin the energy within the throat there so that Santa can begin to speak her truth with ease and with effortlessness. Feel that energy flow in. Michael is going to cut any cords or connections, closing any portals or vortexes. <clears throat> And I want to take that beautiful blue energy that you're flowing into the throat, and we're going to use that energy and begin to expand it out. So flowing it all the way to the top of your head, moving through the third eye chakra, swirling through that third eye chakra and cleansing that area, flowing that beautiful blue all the way to the top. And then I want you to also feel it flowing down into the heart expanding out around the heart space, flowing all the way down into the solar plexus and then into the sacral. And as that energy flows through, we're expanding those chakras. We're clearing out any density. We are releasing any negative energies, feeling it flowing down into the root chakra, opening, expanding, clearing out any additional fears, worries, anxieties, Flow that energy all the way down to the tips of your toes. And as it reaches the toes, we're going to begin to channel and push that energy out into the auric field. And we're asking the angels and guides to begin to strengthen that aura, that energy field around Santa, making it nice and bright, very strong. 
closing and repairing any rips, tears, holes, or fissures in the auric field, making sure that no other energies are able to get into Santa's field, into her energy systems, and connect with her. And tell me as that energy flows around you, what you feel or what you notice. It's like it's like cleansing and cleaning out all of those. It's like every space in my beingness has been cleaned and cleansed out. Mm. It's like everything that was pulled out is now being filled in like a wash. Yes. Very good. And we will ask the guides to scan and locate any AI technology, any implants, any additional energies that are not supposed to be there. And Michael will collect those energies with his net, gently releasing those energies and handing them back off where they need to go. And so as we scan through the body, let's do another scan from head to toe. And as you scan through the body, let me know if anything else stands out to you. Nothing stands out, but when you said implant, something lit up. Okay, tell me where that was. I feel it in my, right in my chest, inside of my shoulder, chest, mm -hmm. area, right in this area. Very good. Let's focus in on that implant. Michael will place his net of light around that implant. And let's focus in on that implant and begin to understand what that implant is. What's the first thing that comes to you? I saw light and I heard, this is how we monitor you. Okay. And so this group or these beings that are monitoring you, who are these beings? We've been watching over this one for a while now. Mm -hmm. We monitor her to make sure there is safety. We monitor her to make sure the body stays in alignment for the purpose. The body has to stay at a certain frequency for the purpose to work through so these beings that are monitoring those that are monitoring her are how are you connected with her we watch this one because of her purpose in this lifetime she has been chosen to for this purpose and we work with her, for her, through her, with her, for this purpose. Is she a part of you or is she separate of you? She is separate. Okay. Do you have a, a contract to do this work with her or how does that work? We speak to her higher self, and with her higher self, we have a agreement. We work with the frequencies with this one. We, we have been visiting her since she was little. Hmm. Are you the beings in the spaceship that she saw in the sky that night? This one is visited by many beings. We are one of the beings. Oh. We are one. We are the ones that are assisting in keeping her frequency at the level that is needed for the purpose. We were not the beings you speak of in the craft. We are separate. We are 
We are multidimensional. Very good. And so is this implant in her shoulder, is it doing anything other than being a monitoring device? No, it is not causing conflict with this one or the body. It is there to monitor and make sure the body is okay with the frequency changes. And so as you monitor her, what is it that you're able to do through this implant? Is Are you able to adjust her frequency if she needs it? Not through the device. Okay. Separately. That is just for monitoring the body, the way it's functioning, and making sure it's not causing any harm. I see. And so as you monitor her, if you notice her frequency needs adjusting, how do you assist her with that? We wait for her to let us know she wants adjusting. She, she has to be the one that lets us know for changes to be made. How does she do that or when does she do that? She is closely connected to her body. So when she feels things that are not functioning right, she begins to call in her guides. She begins to do her self healing that her higher self helps with. And when she calls in, we step in and adjust the frequencies as needed. Very good. And so when you adjust these frequencies, what is it that she notices in her body? Relief. She will, she gets really from the discomforts. We help her with those discomforts. We assist with the light that she brings into her body. Do you do this for many humans on this earth at this time or just for? her specific humans that were chosen to raise the frequency at this time during this time for this time very good is there anything that you'd like to share with us about yourselves anything we'd be interested to know we want those to know that we are here and more of you need to ask for that assistance so we can do our part. Just call us in. We are here to help those during this time for the frequency, for the shift. And if someone were to want to call on you specifically, how would they do that? Intention. Calling in for the frequency in their being to be shifted. Call in the beings who shift energy and frequency. I now call in the frequency of those who shift frequencies that's an intention very good and so as we are connected with you here in this session today from your perspective is there any additional adjustments that santa needs 
you know, she is getting adjusted throughout this session. There is not a specific thing we need to bring at this moment because the entire session is what is needed. Wonderful. Thank you for that. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with us today before I bring in the higher self? No. Very good. Thank you so much. And we'll ask these beautiful beings of light to begin to recede back to their time, space, dimension, or reality with much love and much thanks. And let's bring forward Santa's higher self, just allowing the higher self to drop into that space and begin I'm, to connect with us. I'm going to have to go to the bathroom. Perfect. Not a problem at all. Two, almost there, and one, as we begin to reconnect with the higher self to bring through the answers to your questions, I first want to begin with the body. Now, we just removed, we started out and removed some energies from the lower stomach, and as we removed those energies, are those entities there in the stomach, are they connected to the stomach issues that Santa is having? Yes. Okay. Are there, is there anything else going on in that stomach or was it all connected to those entities? Mostly it was the entities, but... There's times when she eats the wrong foods that causes this. Her anxiety will cause this, but she knows how to shift those changes with healing work. Mm -hmm. She was doing the healing work before and it wasn't quite doing what she wanted or needed because of the attachments. Yes. Very good. And so as you scan through the body, just scanning through the body, doing one more check, is there yeah. anything else that we've missed or anything else hiding in there that we need to take a look at? Or have we cleared everything for her today? You have cleared everything for her, but we do want to say that there is something that doesn't stay permanent, but it lights up when she looks at, there's things that have attached at times when she looks at things on the computer. Mm -hmm. Tell her about that because she's noticed that. What's happening there? So with these, what happens is when you watch and you look, then they attach. And when you keep the watching going, the attachment can become permanent or the attachment can become, it's like a hook. Mm -hmm. But because of the tools that she has, it only lights up and when she stops watching it turns off so what we want to say to her is do not keep on watching these things we know you feel you need to keep up on what's going on but you know what's going on you've known for a while what's been going on this watching is not needed. This watching is needed by those that do not know, that do not feel the things that you know. That is the purpose of those things. For those that already know, we do not want them to continue watching. We want her to know that with the 
strength that she has with frequency and energies that when she watches these things, she actually feeds those things. Mm -hmm. So we want her to know that we want her to realize the importance of her frequency. This one gets curious about what's going on. So she's constantly looking and searching and looking and searching. We do not want this one to do this any longer because this shifts her frequency. At this time, her purpose needs to be just on what she is wanting to bring in. At this time, because of the elevated frequencies that we've been bringing in, that has been coming in, that is here now, it is very important to not look at what is, what has been, but to look at what we want to bring in. Only focus on what is wanted. Any moment, any time that the focus is put onto what is, then you continue what is. Mm -hmm. You're feeding what is. You are anchoring in what is. And we say that for this one specifically because of her frequency, because she is able to shift frequencies very easily. So if she is looking at something that is not wanted, then she is shifting the frequency within her being to that. She is shifting the frequency around her to that. She is resonating that. So unless she wants to resonate that, which she does not, we say, do not focus on anything that does not want to be resonated. Very good. That makes complete sense. Tell her a little bit more about how she shifts frequency. She had some attachments that said she's very, very powerful. What can you share with her about that? You see, this one was brought in at this time for this purpose, for this shift, for this time. Because of her ability to shift the frequencies, she can change an entire area. She can shift an entire area. And if she works, if she were to work with others with similar frequencies, there's a ripple effect that can happen. It is like the water when you throw a rock in there and it ripples. She contains that frequency of the ripple. So when she is able to be in that space of frequency holding, grounded, frequency holding, connecting to Gaia, connecting to source. She brings energy from source through her to Gaia, from source through her to Gaia. As she does that, it shifts the frequency on the planet. It shifts the frequency of that area that she is residing in. It goes out. It shifts the area, it shifts the earth, it shifts the dirt, it shifts the plants, it shifts the air, it shifts the people, it shifts the animals. You see, those entities were holding down the darkness, which creates a dullness in her frequency. It was like putting sunglasses on her frequency. So now with those attachments lifted, she can shine. If she can stay in that frequency, she can assist in this shift. It's 
So we talked a little bit about the fears and the worries that she has. Now, were those fears and worries also coming from the attachments or is there anything else that's creating those fears within her? The attachments resonated those fears. The attachments were like a frequency within her that resonated those. And because she is such a frequency being, she would pick up, up on those frequencies and take up those frequencies as if they were her frequencies. So the frequencies she was feeling were not her frequencies, but when you have a temporary frequency that's resonating within your frequency that's constant, your own frequency starts to pick up on those frequencies and respond as a resonance within that frequency. So it's almost like a habit or like a mirroring of the frequency. So even with the clearing of the entities, it will require her frequency to realign to completely clear out the habitual frequencies that were infiltrated. And can that be done for her today or is that a gradual process? Today, the speed up can happen of the clearing we can speed up that clearing. The clearing had already begun at the beginning of this session. And by the end of this session, her frequency will be matched with source. Mm. And so what will she begin to experience after this session? Higher frequency. <laughs> With higher frequency comes clearer connection, clearer connection to source, clearer connection to higher self, clearer connection to the higher beings that are assisting at this time. Tell her a little bit about those beings that are assisting her. Who does she have around her? She has a team of beings that are assisting her. You see, the beings aren't able to make changes or do things on a physical level because they are not physical. So the only way they can assist is through those that are physical. But those that are physical have to be at a certain frequency to allow that assistance to come through and the being has to be clean and clear of entities, clean and clear of poisons or medicines, clean and clear of anything that holds a barrier between source energy and higher self connection to bring from source through the being. Very we good. have been okay. working with this being. We have been working with this one to help clear out specifically for this time. Very good. And so she's also been on a very strong medication for a while for the arthritis and the psoriasis. Does she need to know about that medication? Anything more you can bring in in this session for her? Well, she's been asking to not be on this medicine anymore. And we are letting her know that time has is coming, but not quite yet. Dear one, not quite yet. You see, this one has to have the belief that she can heal herself completely without the medicine. And there is still a bit of doubt in her that she can completely heal herself without the medicine, even though the medicine 
has not fully been allowed to be in this body. But as we know, when the body, when the mind feels that there is medicine coming in that is helping, then the cells in the body work with the thoughts to make it help. So we are letting her know and we were reminding her that it's the thoughts. It's those thoughts. Those thoughts are the ones that are the true healers. Believe. Believe in yourself. Believe in your abilities. Believe in what you know. Trust yourself. When you believe fully, when you trust fully, you can stop the medicine. That's a difficult one to overcome those thoughts, isn't it? <laughs> yes, but she's focused. We see this happening for her. You see, she is able to shift her thoughts. That's why she is so good at shifting frequencies and that's why manifesting comes easy for this one. Very good. And so as she works on changing her thoughts around releasing this medication, what can you tell her about the arthritis and the psoriasis? Is that something that'll come back into her life or what does she need to understand? It's the same process. You see, the things that she has cleared, has been clearing, has been working on, has healed the arthritis, healed the psoriasis. So those ailments are healed as the thoughts are healed. And you see, this one has had self-hatred for a long time. But now she loves herself. And since she began to love herself, the ailments have been healed. So the remembrance of the ailments is what's holding the ailments. Mm -hmm. The thoughts are very powerful. Yes. The thoughts are what we say are in the driving seat. Do you see that changing in the future? Do you see your thoughts becoming easier to manage? Yes. Tell us from your perspective how you see that changing. You see, there's a lot changing right now, and we've been taught to follow the thoughts that aren't our thoughts. So thoughts come through, thoughts are shown, thoughts are told, and then you take on as if they're your thoughts, but they're not. And then when that continues and continues and continues, then you take on those thoughts as your own thoughts. And no longer do you have your own thoughts. You have the thoughts that are given. You have the thoughts that are taught. That time is changing. That time is diminishing. You may not be able to see it right now, but we see it. We see it. It's falling apart. That whole matrix is falling apart. And as the matrix falls apart, the thoughts that were programmed are fading away. And as they fade away, what is coming in is source energy. And as source energy penetrates the whole planet, it's changing the thoughts. They call that Christed energy. 
And those are the thoughts that are coming through. And as those thoughts come through, they shift the thoughts of the masses. So everything is shifting, you see. Everything is shifting. And those thoughts that were programmed are fading. And as they fade, we step into our certainty. And as you step into your certainty, you are connected to source, you are connected to your higher self, you are connected to your guides. And those thoughts come through, those voices come through. The alignment is coming, the alignment is happening. Everything is getting into alignment. From your perspective, where do you see that we are with this shift and these alignments? How are we doing? It's small progress, you see, because it's like two steps forward, one step back. It's not just one frequency that's working here. You see, there's light frequency, there's dark frequency, you see, so the light makes progress, but then the dark digs in and it puts its heels into the ground. So it's a slow process, but the process is moving. And I know it's hard for those who are observing as humans because to you, time is seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks. We don't work like that. So when we see things, it's quick, it's fast, short. But for humans, it seems long. But we want to say it is not much longer for those to feel the changes and the shift of what's happening. You see, we are on that, we say the edge, and the, we feel, you feel the teetering. And some days it's a feeling of we're falling off a cliff. But what are you falling into, dear ones? You're not falling into a pit. You're falling into bliss. So it's the patience. Patience. That's the hardest part for this. You see, because there's those that don't see and the ones that don't see and the ones that don't know, for them it's nothing. But for those that see, for those that know, for those that feel, it feels like it's forever. But we say there's a purpose of for that, you see. Because those of you that question the time frame, when you question that time frame, does your frequency lift? No. Your frequency drops. So what are you feeding? Exactly what you're not wanting. You're slowing down the speed. So we say this. You're wanting the time to speed up. You're wanting those things to happen now. So we say this. See it as now. See it as happening now. Even if it's little, pretend it's big. We know you don't like those words, pretend. But we're letting you know, when you pretend, you feed what you want. So we say this, if it's little, if you see something little and you say, oh, this is great, this is wonderful, 
This is what we've been waiting for. And when you say it with emotion like that, you are feeding what you are wanting. And when you feed what you are wanting, you speed up the timeline. And, dear ones, you see these timelines shift. These timelines move. But what are you wanting to focus on? What timeline do you want? What timeline do you want to see? What timeline do you want to feel? Are you focusing on that? Are you looking on that? When you wake up, do you see the timeline you want? Or do you see the timeline that is? When you make that choice, you either speed it up or you slow it down. We want you to know, especially those that are awake, those that are aware, it is important. It is most important now for you all to step into your purpose, which is changing the frequency, changing, shifting the frequencies. So stay in the frequency you want to feed. Remember this. Remember this. We know it's hard because you see and you hear and you're seeing and you're hearing. But remember, we've told you this. Before you even chose to come in to this time, we told you this. It's going to be hard. It's going to be challenging. We said this, and you said, I will do this. It will be easy. I know this. But as you come in, you forget. So we want to remind you, remember, you chose to come to this time now. You have a purpose for this time now. There's no job too small. Even if you are just planting the seeds, you are assisting in the shift. Stand in your purpose. Stand in the light. Stay in your heart. Connect with Source. Beautiful. Thank you so much for all of that information. She's wondering, what will she be doing after we move into this shift? She feels like it could be a little something with her hands, but some hands-on healing. What can you share with her? So this one will be a leader when it comes to healing others, she will be able to show others how to run those energies, how to bring energy from source through the hands to that which you are trying to heal. It can be a plant, it can be the ground, it can be water, it can be a being, it can be anything that you are wanting to shift the energy into. And she is able to teach others how to bring from source through to that which they are wanting to shift. She is a natural healer. Very good. And she said she has dreams or she had a dream about falling angels and she was healing them with her hands. What was that dream about? She is able to shift those that are, she is able to shift dark to light. She can shift dark beings to light beings. She is able to bring those that are down those that have dark energies, shift those dark energies to light energy. 
Were these angels that she was seeing or were these dark beings that she was turning into angels? They were dark beings. Ah. And so how does she do that? Does she do that in, in dream time or will she be able to do that here on the earth eventually? She can do that now through intention. She can clear out darkness with intention. If there is spaces, areas that have darkness, she can clear them out. She was not fully able to do that with the attachments. Will she begin to feel more energy running through her hands after this session? Yes, she is right now. Currently, as, as she is speaking, energy is running through her hands more than she has ever felt. She is feeling more energy run through her body right now because the attachments are no longer there. Wonderful. So we've, we've learned that she is, um, she's attached to many different types of beings, or there have been many different types of beings that are guiding her and helping her. What, what was happening? She wanted to know a little bit more information about that time when she felt like she was taking, taken on a ship as a teen. What else can you share with her about that? These are beings that work with her. These are beings that are connected with her. She is, they are part of her family. They were there to remind her and to connect with her again. They brought her back on the ship. She was been on the ship before when she was little, but she does not remember this. She was taken during sleep time. What happens when she's on the ship? What does she experience? Mostly it is for her soul to have a connection because she is uncomfortable on planet earth so and she feels alone so when she comes on the shift ship it is a connection for her a moment of feeling back with family and when she was little and we brought her on the ship we would show her things that she could do with her hands she could she could levitate she can shift and lift and move and make changes with things beautiful and so these beings that she's connected to and that her are part of her family what can you tell her about those beings they are pure beings of love and light they are about love, light, they are, she wants to know what they look like, but they are mostly light beings, so there's not much for her to see that she would understand. We just want her to know that she is loved, she is taken care of, she is looked after. And that when that time comes, her purpose, that time for her purpose, she will do her purpose. When she looks at the sun, we talk, we are part of who she talks with, who she speaks with. We speak through her, we speak to her through the sun. Are these beings, are they part of the sun? Or you're just using that as a portal to connect with her? The sun is a portal that we transport. Trans we come through the sun and we can use the sun as a frequency for the frequency, for the connection to speak with her. We try to show her 
we try to show her the beings that are here. There is beings in the sky. There is beings in the sun. There is beings that monitor. There is beings that watch planet Earth. She said that she's able to see some of these beings when she takes pictures. And one of the beings that she could see was almost like a dragon in the sun. Is that a being that's connected to her or just one that she's able to see? She is able to see frequencies that others are not able to see. And these are guides. Mm. The dragon guides are protectors. She has also seen animal beings. There are beings. She, this one, is contacted by many beings, many different beings. There are those that watch over her. There are protector guys. There are those that she calls on. <sighs> She sees these as lions. Mm. These are the these are the protectors of the healers. These are you see, she calls in, she says this. I call in the healers of the healers. She did not know who she was calling when she says this, but as she says this, it is the lyrens. Those who though that is who comes in as she calls this, as she says this. What is her connection to the Lyrans? Has she had an incarnation there, or she's just connected to the lion beings? They are wanting to assist her because she is a healer. She can heal. She not only heals humans. But she can heal the planet. She can heal Gaia. She can heal the animals. She can heal the plants. So she is a big healer. So those are, the Lyrans are the protectors of the healers. They come in, they assist. So when a healer, when the healers are not feeling well, they can call in the healers of the healers, which is which are the Lyrans. So when she calls in the healers of the healers, she did not know this, but that is who she was calling upon. And that's why they are there for her. So she was not one of these, but they consider her part of them because she is a healer. Beautiful. And so when she looks into the sky and into the clouds and she sees the different beings there, what is she seeing in the clouds? So you see this one, her frequency has been shifting and has been changing. So she is able to see that, that those are not able to see. You see, she is able to see a bit of the fifth dimension. She has been getting bits and pieces and bits and parts. And there is times in her days when her energy is in the right alignment, in the right frequency, when she is no when she is not feeling the fear, when she is not feeling the anxiety, when she is in contentment. And when she is in that contentment and she raises her energy because she is outside, she gets glimpses of fifth dimension. And not only fifth dimension, she is able to see into, we have shown her eighth, tenth, eleventh dimension. Wow. So we are just letting her know that when she sees these beings, she's just getting a peek into what is there. She thinks she is seeing into something that's not here, but these things are always here. These things are all, always about. But you see, these human eyes can only see a small fraction of what is.
And from your perspective, do you see more of us beginning to see these higher dimensions and see into these other realities in the yes. future? Yes, there is already there is already many of you that are seeing, but many don't share because sharing causes people to react a certain way. Mm -hmm. So most don't not, most do not share what they see. And there are those that see that don't allow the knowingness to come through, meaning they say, no, I didn't just see that. Mm -hmm. No, that wasn't that. Oh, that was just a bird. Oh, that must be just a plane. So you are not allowing what is able to be seen to be seen. So we say this, you may think it's your imagination, but tell yourself, yep, it was a pink elephant. And so we say pink elephant because that sounds way extreme to say, but we want you to know that extreme doesn't mean extreme. There is a spectrum that you put on things. There is a measuring stick you put on things. Throw out the measuring sticks. Say, anything is possible. And when you say that, you are allowing for the possibilities to come in. Beautiful. And so she's wondering, what should be her main focus in her life? What should she put her focus and attention on each and every day? We spoke a little bit about this earlier when we were saying, put your focus on what you are wanting. Put your focus on what you want to see. That's why we are saying, do not look at those things. Do not go onto those social media things. Do not look for those things that are having more information of the things that are the things that you do not want. And we understand. You say, I want to know everything that's going on. I don't want to be blinded by it. We understand that. But we are not saying that to those of you. You see, there are those of you that know already. You know there's corruption. You know there is pain. You know there is suffering. You know this. So don't focus on it. Don't look at it. Don't look for it. Don't watch it. If you see it, shut it off. If you see something that looks bad, we want you to re-visualize that scene with something not bad. We taught her this before. You see, this one is very triggered with animal abuse. And it, just the thought of that, crushes her frequency yes. so whenever she accidentally would see something on the computer or tv that showed this we said refocus re see that scene so now you see that person holding that dog and loving that dog and caring for that dog refocus it see what you want and she was challenged with this at first because she said why should I pretend that nothing's there when something's there? I know it's there. I don't want to pretend that things aren't getting hurt when I know they're getting hurt because I want to stop the hurt. We tell her this, when you focus on the hurt, you continue the hurt to go on. This is hard for you humans to understand this. But we say this, when you see hurt or you know hurt, change the picture. When you change the picture, you change reality. Focus on what you want. Your focus right now, your focus during this time needs to be on what you want. You want to see everybody loving each other? See everybody loving each other. You want to see the world where there's no war, where there's no anger? Then every time you turn that TV on, we rather you not. Every time you turn that computer on, you visualize pictures of what you want to see. Oh my gosh, look at them. They're all hugging. Oh my gosh, they're shaking hands. That country shaking hands with that country. Look at that. Wow. 
When you talk like this, you are changing the frequency. You're feeding what you want. We want you. And we say this not only for this one, but for all of you that have this visualization power, which you all have, but some practice it more than others, so it's stronger than others. We want you to shift that focus when you see something that lowers the frequency, visualize the higher frequency, even if you have to make believe it. If you need to see rainbows and unicorns, then see rainbows and unicorns. If you need to see cupcakes, see cupcakes. Whatever the thing is that shifts your frequency, do that because you are changing the planet when you do that. Very good. Very good. Thank you for that information. So, <laughs> and we talked about not worrying too much about timelines because we're always shifting. She did have a question at what age will she be ascending? Anything you can tell us about where we are, how close we're getting? I know we talked a little bit already, but anything else you can share? You see, this is a difficult question because <laughs> it's like the humans want to put it like a switch. Like yes. we switched it on. Okay, now we are ascended. Yep. <laughs> it does not work like that. Because if we look at it like that, then we say this, you are each on your own timeline. Mm. And when we say that, the frequency shifts. So... To a certain extent, the talk of the ascension lifts everybody's energy, and we like that. So we like the talk of ascension. But we also want to say that ascension is on a personal basis. So there's those that are not awakened. And so for those that are not awakened, the ascension for them might be waking up. And so someone that was asleep might ascend to a place that is now aw being awake. And a person that was awake, ascension to them might be now being able to run healing energy through their hands like never before. So ascension isn't either, is also not on a scale or on a something that can be measured because ascension to you might be ascension different to somebody else. There is no that word ascension does not like one all be all fit all for everyone. So we want each and every person to focus ascension on their beingness because in reality, your world is different from her world, which is different from his world. And that is hard for you all to understand because you say, but we all live in the same world. This is earth. Yes, but you have to realize it doesn't work like that. It's frequency. You see, so your earth is different from his earth. It's different from her earth. So what's important? His earth, her earth? No, your earth. So focus on your earth. What are you needing in your earth? What is the challenges in your earth? What are the hurdles in your earth? Don't look at the hurdles. Look at the opposite of the hurdles. If the hurdles is a bad job, then you focus on, wow, I have the most amazing job right now. If your hurdles is health, I have never felt so healthy ever before. You see, you shift with the thoughts. You can shift your world with your thoughts. So we say this, focus on your world, and that is your ascension. So. This one likes to put times, she wants times, she wants a date, she wants a calculation of when and where and how, and we say this, you want it now? Well then, shift your thoughts now. You want it to be tomorrow? Well then, shift now for tomorrow. You want it to be five years from now? Well then, take your time. So, it's all up to you. And we say this, there is also a 
collective timeline that's happening as well. And that collective timeline is shifting. That collective timeline is going into the positive. And we know you can see that. We know you can see that. It's not going fast enough. It's not big enough. So that's where the conflict is. Don't focus on the conflict. Focus that you're seeing that there's actually a shift happening. There's people waking up that have never woken up before. There's people seeing things that they never were able to see before. This is huge. This is huge. And we say, as you're in the shift, you're going, okay, yeah, that just happened, but now what? Now what's going to happen? What's going to happen next? You see, when you do that, where does the frequency? It drops. Mm -hmm. So focus on the positive. Focus on the shifts that are happening. Focus on what is going on that you are seeing, that you are seeing that is shifting, that is positive. And as you're doing that, you are feeding the timeline you want. You are feeding the speed up. You are feeding exactly what you are wanting to make happen. And we know this is hard. So we say, don't be hard on yourself. Because when you're hard on yourself, what do you do? You slow down the timeline. You slow down the frequency. So be gentle. Be gentle. It's okay. It's okay if you have a bad day and you have a rough spot. You know, even healers get sick. It's okay. Everybody has a rough time. Everybody has a rough day. Everybody has a rough moment in time. What are these rough moments for? To focus on? No. These rough moments are to happen so you can see that you can get through them. And when you get through them, you're better off than where you were before the rough spot. So guess what? Rough spots are good. Rough spots are positive. Even if you can't see it, during the rough spot. We want you to see that rough spots are times when you are shifting out of the notness that you do not want into the wantness that you are wanting. That's the purpose of these rough spots. Don't focus on the roughness as the roughness is happening. Focus on what you are wanting after the rough spot, but focus on it as if it is happening during the rough spot. That is excellent information. Thank you. So speaking of focusing on what you want and, and shifting into that, she is wanting her personal business to grow the um, intuitive life coach and empath healing business that she does. And she's got a little bit of fear of stepping out of that nine to five position. What does she need to know or understand about that? So this is her roadblock. And this is a big one for this one because she prides herself as being a good worker. She's worked since she was 14. She has never not worked. So for her, she does not compute saying, I do not no longer want to work as being something that fits for the programming that was programmed in this one. So this roadblock is all about the programming, which is part of her ascending. So for her to ascend, she has to get rid of the programming. To get rid of the programming, she has to step into things that cause her fear, which is a rough spot that we were just speaking of. So it's going to be rough for her to say, I no longer want to work at this job or to tell her boss, I'm going to work part time. Are you okay with that? You see, she is afraid of being judged. She is afraid of her boss seeing her as a bad person, and she does not want to have anybody see her as a bad person. But we say this. Did you come into this lifetime 
to not being seen as a bad person? Or did you come into this lifetime to live your purpose, to shift the planet? <laughs> well, that seems simple as we say it, doesn't it? Yes. So do not put the weight on other people. Do not put the weight on what others will see as you. Because you know what? There might be a growth that needs to happen for the other person that would not happen unless you do your part. So maybe that boss needs to have growth for himself, but he is not able to have his growth unless you do your part by stepping back. You see, you see everything, dear one, everything works hand in hand together, even if you're not able to see it. So it is very important for your purpose and for your business to step back from this nine to five job. And we understand that it's going to cause some difficulties within your beingness because you're going to feel things that you never felt before because you've never had free time. You've never had quiet time to just step back and be in your space and be in yourself because you've always been there for others. You've always been there for others. And this is your time to be for you. This is your time to focus on you. This is your time, Santa. This is your time. And we just mentioned everything works hand in hand. So as you are able to take care of yourself and let go, let go and just take care of yourself. With doing that, you are going to free your time up, free up your knowingness to work on the things you came here to do, your purpose, which is going to help many. So you see, dear one, you're not willing to let go of something because you say, I'm helping others, but yet if you let it go and take care of yourself, you're, you will be able to help more than you are able to help now. And you are not able to see that unless you are willing to let go. Let go. Let it go. Step back and let it go. Beautiful. That is excellent information as well. <laughs> we all need to hear that. She's wondering if there is any information from her QHHT session, anything uncompleted or anything that she needs to know about that. No, that session went exactly how it needed to go at that time. You see, this one always wants everything right now and everything to be fixed right now. And she says, why can't I get all the information at once? Well, there's a purpose that we trickle in that information. You see, you needed to have what you had come through when it did. And you needed to wait 10 months for that appointment because you weren't ready when you thought you were ready during that time. So even though you want to speed things up, you need to allow the integration to happen slowly. And that session was exactly how it needed to be. And dear one, sometimes there are things that you are looking for in others that you need to create yourself. So, for example, we say, you are looking for a group or someone else to create something at that time for you. But that wasn't the purpose of that person. Just you sharing the idea has already created seeds and many. So 
just realize when you are needing something, when you are wanting something, do not keep those needs and wants inside. Speak up. Communicate. Others don't look down upon you when you do that. You think they do, but they don't. And if they do, that doesn't matter. Because what are you here to do? Your purpose. And what are you able to do when you speak your mind and you speak your thoughts? Creativity. And if you need help, others are not able to help unless you speak up. So when you need something, when you need help, when you need assistance, when you feel like something's not complete or incomplete, you speak up and you say that. You say, this feels incomplete. And then that person is able to assist in anything. But if you don't speak up and say that, how is anybody to know that there's an incompleteness? And sometimes the incompleteness is not for the other to solve, but it's for you to create yourself for others. Because, dear one, Sometimes there are things that you need that you are not the only one that needs. Others are needing this as well. And if you think, I need this, maybe I'll create something for this. Then guess what? You are helping others solve things that they are not willing to ask for or create themselves. So we just want to reiterate that that session was exactly what was needed and anything that is needed after the session is being worked on or created by you or with others. Wonderful. And she was wondering if any of the information came through um, in that session could have possibly been some of her attachments bringing some information through. There was not, they were not speaking, but they were influence, influencing the frequency that was coming through. She was able to hear that afterwards because she can hear frequency. So she knew that there was more there and she could hear the tones and she could hear words that said to her, there is something here that needs to give some attention to. Very good, very good. And so she's wondering if there will be any world changes this year, any weather events or anything that you can share with her? She's, I think she's had some dreams that making her wonder about this. So because she is so sensitive to frequency, she is able to pick up on the possibilities. So there is times when there is possibilities of shifts and the shifts that she is speaking of are influenced by not just the planets, but they are also being, there is technology that infiltrates the weather and there are those that try to create things on the planet. So There is always possibilities, and as you can see, as if you pay attention to volcanoes at this current time frame, there is an unsettled restlessness that is, unhap that is happening now to the planet. There is a, we'll call it a grumbling that is going on, and there is volcanoes that are releasing some of these pressures, but these pressures are being caused by the unsettled humans, by the dark entities that are being pushed out and off of the planet. It's creating a rift in the frequencies. So there is a potential of a 
volcanic eruption that is quite large. But if the frequencies can stay stabilized, there will not need to be a release. But there needs to be an understanding that the release is always needed. Releases are needed. Earthquakes are releases. Volcanoes are releases. These things scare people, but these are needed because there could be an eternal disruption that could be huger if there was not a slower release. We do not see any concerns for such huge releases at this time. But we will say there is potential for that. And if Gaia needs to go through a huge restabilization, she will do that. So, humans need to be aware that if there is such a thing, it will be quick. But we do not see that as a current concern. Very good. Very good. She says she has quite vivid dreams and sometimes feels like she's a little bit exhausted in the morning when she wakes up. Where does she go in her dreams or what is she experiencing? So this one does a lot during dream state. She goes to other planets. She goes to other dimensions. She is visited. She gets information. She gets frequency shifts. We do a lot with this one during sleep time because that is the most... During that sleep time, she is disconnected from work and she is dis disconnected from things that cause her to worry. So she is in a very open space for us to make those shifts. And she is more open for things to come through. So we are letting her know that she visits other times. She visits other lifetimes. She visits other worlds. She does a lot of flying during her sleep time. This one likes to fly. So she flies a lot during her sleep time. She does a lot of monitoring of the planet. She checks out areas. She monitors the frequency in spots and areas. So she hovers above and checks out the frequencies to make sure nothing is too out of balance for what is needed at the time. Wonderful. She was very close with her grandpa and she wonders if he's here with us today and if he has any messages he'd like to bring through for her. Yes, so proud of her. He visits her every day. She's only aware of some of the times, but he visits her every day because he loves being in her energy. He loves being around her. He loves watching what she does. He loves how she helps people. He's so proud of her. He's proud of how she's working with the family, how she tries to help the family. 
and specifically and especially he loves how she sends healing energy to her grandma. He wants her to know that everything's going to be okay. She has concern and she worries about things with the family, people not getting along. And he wants her to know that a lot of the stuff that she feels with that family stuff isn't about her. And they each have a lot to work on in themselves. And to try not to take things so personal. And this sounds funny, but he says he really appreciated the gesture of the candy that she put by his picture. Beautiful. Are there any other uh, loved ones there that would like to bring through any messages? Yes, yeah, so we, there's two of us, we are her aunts, mm -hmm. and we watch over her, and she, she calls us in sometimes when she has questions, and we want her to know that we want her to come up with her own answers, but we whisper suggestions. We're there to support her. And we really are fascinated when she does the healing work. We had no idea that she did this. And we hope that she does this more. We think that's the... She constantly asks us what we can do, what she can do to help the family. And we know this is going to sound difficult, but we want her to slowly introduce to them what she does. Some of them are going to be a little bit more open than the others, but we feel it's time to start introducing this part of her to the family. And we will be there. When she has those conversations, we will be there energetically to help the conversations. Very good. Very good. Thank you for those messages. She said she has a fear of drowning. Now, does that fear, does, is that connected to a past life experience or what is she experiencing there? So she's had multiple, actually two past lives where she drowned. And in this life, um, she had three um, scary water experiences, which would not have been so scary for her if it wasn't for the past life experiences. Can that energy or those connections be cleared for her so she doesn't feel that fear so much? Yeah, those can. Actually, we can clear those thoughts. We can clear those today right now. For Wonderful. Her. I know that'll make a huge difference for her. Thank you for that. Yeah. And so just following up on a few more of her health concerns. Now she feels like the, mi the migraines that she has is connected to the medication that she's 
taking. Is there anything that we can do for her today to assist her with that so she doesn't feel those headaches? Well, the migraines mostly happen now from her stress. She mm -hmm. causes herself a lot of stress from worrying and we want her to step to start now practicing less worry so when she when she worries like she does the whole body will start to shut down if she were to continue like that so we create these migraines to stop the worrying because when she gets the migraines it pretty much shuts everything down so in a sense, these migraines assist her, even though they're very painful for her. They assist her, and how they assist her is they shut down. So shut her, shut her thoughts down, and she goes into complete meditation, healing mindset. So mm. we would like her to go into those healing spaces before migraines happen. Because, you see, she knows when she's stressing, and she knows when she's worrying before the migraines even come. So let's have her practice as soon as the stress moment comes, as soon as something's causing her stress, to go straight into what she would do as if she already had the migraine. She's never done this. So if she were to go into that mode before the migraine, she could stop the process of the migraines coming before they come. Because it's the stress. The stress is an overload on the system. And this system can't be overloaded because we need the system clear for the energies to run through, for the frequencies that we need to run through this body. She needs to not have the stress that she has, which is caused mostly by the nine to five work and the relationship issues. Okay. Very good, very good. And she wanted to see if she could improve her eyesight. And she was told in the last session that it's the inner sight that is being worked on. Where is she with that inner sight? How's that coming along for her? Well, we've been amping it up lately because um, as she noticed, she's also been seeing more beings in the sky. So um, there's a sight that's being adjusted right now. So she's also been noticing that her sight also, she's needing her glasses more recently. And that's causing fear in her because she's thinking, oh, great, now my eyesight's getting worse. But um, there's just a little bit of a, like a recalibration that's going on currently. And... Um, as far as her eyesight with the glasses, she can, um, actually we'd encourage this. We want her to do more of her hands-on healing practicing with the eyesight. So um, at night before she goes to bed and in the morning when she wakes up, we want her to put her both of her hands on, over the eyes, um, directly over the eyes and um, do the green light, um, the green healing light energy on the eyes and then also right after she does the visualization with the green light we want her to do the visualization of no longer needing glasses and oh my gosh i don't need glasses anymore look at this i can even read things i can read these ingredients on this box so that's that talk is also um the certainty that we need her to have she needs the certainty with it it lowers the doubt so practicing with the hands-on healing, um, the verbiage of the uh, manifesting what she wants and um, changing that frequency, the certainty frequency, that will bring the, that will help the eyesight um, come back. Wonderful. Very good. Is there anything else that you'd like to bring through for Santa today? Any other messages you'd like to share with her? Well, 
we just want to remind her that she's loved and she feels alone a lot. She has this feeling that I'm alone and that she's, that there's nobody else like her that she can connect with. And we want her to know that, you know, we are always here with her. So she's never alone in that sense. Um, if there's any, um, any of these beings that work with her that she wants to call upon during those moments, she can call upon them and they will be there for her. She will also, um, as her um, eyesight and the inner sight and the um, seeing starts to better, when she calls upon them, she'll start to see more of them. Um, she might just see them like, like the outer, like an outer image of like a, like a, um, just knowing that there's a being there because she sees like this, an outer image of it, but not actually seeing detail. That'll be the beginning of what she'll start to see of them. Um, but also, again, with the manifesting, she can manifest just about anything she wants, but she doesn't practice that. <laughs> so um, where she struggles the most right now emotionally is she really wants to connect with others that are at the same level of um, abilities that she has. And she wants to be able to connect and talk and share and possibly even do um, work with the planet with them. But she keeps saying, where are they? Where are they? Where are they? How come I can't find them? And again, that drops a frequency and that takes them farther away from her. So she knows this, but we want to remind her this which just like you do with everything else that you try to manifest and that comes to you, you manifest as if it was, you mas manifest it and you see it as already is. So we say to you, see it. And we say, oh, here's all these people. Here's, you can even, you can even imagine names if you want. You can say, there's Larry, there's Sue, there's Mary, there's Linda, whatever that is. You can just say it and like, there they are. And they're, we're connecting and we're sharing and, just do it like that. Just do it like you do everything else. And as you do that, they're hearing it. And because there's others that are wanting the same, they're lonely too, and they feel alone and they're wanting connection as well, but they're afraid and they don't know where to look. So turn on your light by setting that attention and setting that manifesting and they'll come about. Wonderful. Thank you for those messages. Who all have we been speaking to throughout the session? Well, there's many that's come through. There's been um, her higher self. There was the beings that were in the ship. There was um, some higher dimensional beings and then the ants and the grandpa. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you all so much for coming through today and bringing through such amazing, very amazing information. And how were Santa and I connected? I feel like there's been a little bit of bringing us together for this session. There was a past life that you worked together. You did healing work together. You both were healers in a past life together. Wonderful. Well, I'm so grateful to have reconnected with Santa in this life. Any final messages today or are we complete? Um, just a message for you that um, if you're contemplating or thinking about hands-on healing, um, or if you already do it, there needs to be a, you, we'd like to see you do more of the hands-on healing. You did it before in a past life. It's really, conducive to um, what you already do. And if you were to do that, it will amp up all the other abilities. Very good. That's definitely been coming through for me in sessions lately. So I need to probably practice a little bit more with that, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Thank you so much for that information and all the beautiful messages.